Good afternoon, my name is Jim Conlon and welcome to the latest edition of the Entertainment Show. All this month we're looking at iconic TV series that have left their mark throughout the decades in our cult classics uh, documentary. And this month up for discussion is Gotham, uh, the iconic look at the Batman sort of franchise, uh, a reinvented look at it, looking at Gotham in the early years, all the earlier characters of Bruce Wayne, uh, Detective James Gordon, the villains, uh, King Wing, uh, Joker, and how they came about. I'm delighted to be joined by one of the stars now of the show. She appeared in all five seasons of uh, Gotham. Uh, Cameron Bindicondova, who played the role of Selena Kyle uh, in Gotham. And Cameron, first of all, I suppose when you started off that Gotham adventure, I suppose so long ago, roughly filming it, uh, five sort of seasons, did you think yourself as a young actress at the time, probably one of your first projects, that Gotham would still be talked about and revered even to this day? No, I actually, I was just talking to one of my team members uh, about this last week. I, I had no idea that it's still trending on Netflix. I had absolutely no idea. Um, so no, I definitely did not see it coming. I was very young when I first got the show um, and it wasn't I knew it was a big deal being on a net, network show but I I also didn't really realize how big of a deal it was because I was 14 and I just wanted to work and have fun um, so the fact that it's still revered and the fact that it's still talked about today is Nothing that 14 year old Cameron would have expected, no. <laughs> and Cameron, speaking to David, uh, one thing he told me was uh, it was a rigorous uh, process for him to land the role of um, Bruce Wayne. And I presume you were one of the primary roles as well. You were the sort of males, uh, you're, you're the equivalent of the male lead. You were the sort of one of the, the prominent uh, female leads uh, of the series. Uh, you were in from the very beginning as such. So was it a rigorous sort of audition process for you as well to land the role? And what are your memories of it? Um, I remember hearing some of his story and I remember thinking I had no, um, I really didn't have any similarities to his, uh, to his process. I, it felt rigorous. My audition process felt rigorous in the sense that I went in to audition three times, but it was every single audition was spaced out within with weeks in between. So my first audition, I was under the impression that I was auditioning for this character named Lucy because they kept everything confidential. Um, and then about a week and a half later, maybe two weeks later, I found out that I got a call back. So I had to come back and do the audition again. And then I didn't hear a word for a very long time. And then I found out that I got the producer session. So it wasn't necessarily rigorous in the sense that they they um, put me through a lot of, of uh, work and effort, but it was more so rigorous in the sense that I was waiting or it felt like I was waiting forever and it felt like torture because I was just like, I just thought to myself, can you just tell me if I got it? I just want to know if I got it. Just tell me. Um, so not rigorous um, in terms of work, but definitely time and patience. <laughs> and Cameron, uh, in terms of uh, Gotham as such and your character, uh, Selena Kyle, when you saw the script and you mentioned it was the, you thought it was the Lucy sort of character, but this is Selena Kyle. When you met the directors and producers, what had they in mind from the character? Did you was it always that sort of foxy, sort of feisty, sort of real, sort of female, sort of lead that they were looking for? Well, I didn't actually find out that it was for Selena until I got the role, okay. because my manager, when she told me my agents and my manager answered the phone saying meow. And I was really confused. I was like, what the heck are you talking about? Um, so I really had no idea that I was even going up for Catwoman until I found out I got the job. But 
I had a sense that it was Catwoman mainly because um, they were asking for cat movements. Um, they said that the actor who would be hired needed to be able to move their body in an agile way and be very physical. So in that sense, I knew that it could be Catwoman, but excuse me, oh my goodness. Um, Lucy, even though the, the character name was different from Selena, I did know that the character would be feisty because it, it was described as street thief, orphan, um, fierce when cornered. So I knew going into it that this was going to be a very rugged, very raw and um, complicated character, but it wasn't until I actually got the news that I got the job that I found out, oh, I'm actually playing the young Catwoman. And I suppose, Cameron, in terms of that, did you always feel, we know in Gotham, uh, characters never sort of die as such. They almost have nine lives. They say a cat has eight lives. Uh, in Gotham, they almost <laughs> have uh, nine lives as such. Did you ever sort of fear, or do you always feel that sort of security that you will be there for the full five seasons? Um, it never really crossed my mind whether I, whether, you know, my job was secure or not secure, um, regarding if Selena ever did die, but I, I never really thought of it because I always knew that, you know, no job is guaranteed, you know, you are someone should always show up to work like it's a privilege to be there. Everyone should always show up to work like, um, everybody should always put their best effort forward. And so I, I never thought about Selena dying, not out of like superior confidence, um, but I also never thought that it wasn't possible, mainly just because uh, I just wanted to show up to work and do the best that I could. And they were always sort of teasing that love interest between Selena and a, a young sort of a Bruce throughout the sort of series as well. And uh, Selena sort of, while she wanted Bruce uh, in terms of her interest in obviously when anyone, when he took affections uh, towards anyone, the sort of any other girl, uh, the jealousy sort of really sprung out on her character as well. Can you repeat the question one more time? Yeah, um, uh, Cameron, just in, they always sort of teased in the early seasons that sort of love interest uh, between Selena and a young Bruce. And we saw whenever sort of Bruce sort of went his own path away from Selena and found, uh, say, with uh, another sort of love interest, it really sort of stoked that uh, jealousy uh, amongst Selena. Yeah, I. it was very interesting playing uh you know working in those scenes because selena never really struck me as a jealous person um but it more so i whenever i approached those scenes and whenever i you know prepared for the, prepared for them it was more so a focus on being territorial than jealous um because selena Selena can mess anyone up if she wants to. Doesn't she does not care whether you're a six, seven man with, you know, fangs that we saw in season five, or you know, a, a rich girl who is pretty privileged. It really can't really scare her easily. But it was more so um, very. She was more so very protective of what, of what was hers. Um, so I'm not sure if I answered the question properly but um i think she was less of a jealous person and more of a territorial and protective person and cameron we know the stunts in uh, gotham were sort of first class and were uh, a pr predominantly expert sort of stunt team did you get to partake in many of your own stunts i did i did um i had a stunt double throughout the entire series um my first stunt double lori um, she ended up getting injured, critically injured on a different job. So she wasn't able to continue with me throughout from about season 
two or three and on, but um, she and I worked very closely. Um, she, we would meet up at my apartment and we'd make sure that our movements were the same and we'd watch videos of cats fighting and um, very, uh, we were very detail oriented about how we approached Selena's movement. And then as time went on and I had my second stunt double Sarah join me, um, she was also a dancer. And the times that, the time that Sarah joined, joined the team as my stunt double, she did a lot more of the stunt work just because there was a lot of um, emotional weight to fight scenes that I didn't really want, I just didn't want to deal with. Um, but toward the, toward the last few seasons, I was actually able to not only perform my stunts, but I was also able to choreograph or help choreograph some of the fight scenes. Um, and that was really amazing. Norm, um, the stunt coordinator was really kind with me and very patient and very collaborative. And to be put, to be given an opportunity as an actor and dancer to, you know, um, get, uh, how do I say this? To, to be given the opportunity to use all of my skill sets and not just one part of my skill sets for the character was um, a huge, huge deal for me. And I, oh my gosh, it was so fun. And Cameron, I suppose uh, in terms of five seasons of Gotham, obviously you were probably filming uh, for six years. Obviously you mentioned 14 at the time when you joined. Obviously once you found out it was going to be the final season, was there obviously there was probably obviously disappointment but was there also a sense of sort of relief as such being involved in something that was going on probably 360 hours of 365 days a year for basically six years of your sort of childhood sort of life that uh, that 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 sort of chapter was coming to an end in one sense sadness but in other sense a bit of relief it was bittersweet for sure but um, we had all been, like David had mentioned, his audition process was pretty gruesome. Everybody, every single person who was part of Gotham production was put through the ringer for five years. Um, there were a lot of great moments and there were a lot of hard moments as any show or um, any film set would deal with. And it it definitely, when we found out that it was the last season and when we found out that we were ending, the, the sweetness out of the, if it were bittersweet, the sweetness came from a sense of pride, knowing that we all gave 100% of our being. Um, everybody grew so much, whether it be um, emotionally, mentally, um, Talent wise, every everybody gave one hundred percent of themselves. But on the other on the other end of that spectrum, it everybody was tired. <laughs> everybody was exhausted. Um, so yes, there was some uh, some sadness in in an ending, but it was more so relief in having it be able to end in a way that we would want it to and. Um, give the show justice and give the characters the justice that we all grew to believe they deserved. And Cameron, I suppose every week in Gotham you were sort of filming and you would have sort of guest actors or guest actresses walk into the door and play some sort of role or a sort of a mini sort of villain. And probably looking back when you saw those episodes, do you think to yourself, wow, that's such a cool character. I would have loved to have done something like that. I remember we had... Um, Kyle Vincent Terry spoke to him there who played Headhunter in terms of one of those sort of two episodes. And just character sort of that. Did you almost feel like, wow, well, there's so many stories that you, we could explore in terms of going down that avenue with Selena Kyle or stuff like that? Um, I just want to make sure I'm understanding your question. Are you asking... Are like you asking... Of, was there any sort of guest... Uh, guest character or someone who played it came in and played a guest role where you thought to yourself wow that's such an interesting character I, I love to see that develop uh, throughout the, the season oh yes um my friend Michelle she played Firefly hmm. um 
who, whose, you know, surname was Bridget, it's Bridget Pike, Bridget Pike, I think it was Pike. Yeah. Um, she, I loved that character so much and I loved working with Michelle. So I wanted to see more of her because the character was great, but also I wanted to work with her more. Um, I loved that character. I also loved, um, oh my gosh, it was Francesca's character. She played um, the Harley Quinn yeah. origin. I can't remember what her character name was, but I loved her. She freaking killed that role. Uh, so I, I would have loved to see her more. But who else? Cameron Monaghan obliterated, in my opinion, almost I, I mean, he, he took the role of the Joker and he completely flipped him on it, on his head. And I don't think there's anybody who could have done that, that job um, as well as he did. So he was a favorite guest star of mine. Um, oh, getting to work with Miss Jada was amazing. I loved getting to pick her brain sometimes while we were on set and just um, learn from watching her play Fish Mooney. There were so, there I could go on and on. There were so many incredible actors that we got, that I got to observe. Um, and luckily I feel like we did almost every character justice, but those are the characters that come to mind that I would have, I would not have been upset if we saw more of them. <laughs> Cameron, after spending sort of six years in your life, and obviously we know the sort of Batman sort of universe never dies, it sort of comes again in terms of games, in terms of movies, and in terms of animated sort of series, would you ever be open in the future maybe to do voiceover sort of work on an animated series, or would you like to sort of stray away from the Selena Kyle Catwoman character I've been portrayed her in the past, or is it something that you're open to again maybe in terms of opportunities uh, in the future i'm open to all opportunities you know um it definitely depends on the script and what um what kind of outlet it is i've always loved the idea of doing voiceover work so anything really involving that i would be super excited about but yeah i'm not necessarily closed off to doing anything um doing anything within the Selena universe again. It would just have to be the right project at the right time and um, God's will, essentially. So yeah, I'm not close off to anything. And I suppose Cameron, it's probably the penultimate question, the second last question I'm going to ask you. Let's pretend there was a Gotham encyclopedia as such. And let's pretend they put the character Selena Kyle into that encyclopedia. And the synopsis underneath her, they left two sentences blank. And they asked you, Cameron Vicandova, having portrayed the role of Selena Kyle, to write those two sentences. What would you like those two sentences to read to summarize? Oh my goodness. Oh. And it's a Gotham encyclopedia. So Selena is a teenager. Okay. Um, I'd say Selena is a 16-year-old misunderstood Oh, oh, <laughs> that's so hard. This is a good question. Um I'd say Selena is a misunderstood 16 year old who often finds herself in trouble while trying to do the right thing. She, the, the, I'd say that would be the first sentence. And then the second sentence would say, she keeps her circle close. Her, she keeps her circle close, 
with the one closest to her being Bruce Wayne. And, and then there'd be a semicolon. So then I can kind of do the little, I can go through the loophole of gram grammar. So there'd be a semicolon. And then I'd say, um, and then I'd say, oh shoot. I definitely like the first sentence. Selena is a six is a misunderstood 16 year old who often finds herself in trouble while trying to do the right thing. She keeps her circle small in order to stay safe. But the one person closest to her, Bruce Wayne, comma, Bruce Wayne, comma, is often the source of her, of her consequences, maybe uh, inconveniences. I don't know, something along those lines. <laughs> uh, Cameron Vickendova, finally, have you ever been to Ireland and is it in the sort of pipeline for you in the future in terms of uh, doing some upcoming work maybe in uh, the Emerald Isle? Yes, I've never been, but I want to go. Um, it seems so beautiful there. And yes, yes, yes. Well, they, no, I've never been, but yes, 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 times 90 million, I want to come. Uh, on that note, Bar Bar Cameron Vikendova, thanks for joining us this evening to give us your thoughts on portraying Selena Kyle and the iconic uh, cult classic TV series Gotham. It definitely will stand the test of time. Your portrayal of a young cat woman obviously has left its mark, and Gotham is still revered to, to even to this day, nearly a decade on since it first came to light, and no doubt it'll run for decades more. Uh, Cameron Vikendova, an absolute pleasure, and we wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Take care. Thank you. Thank you for taking time out of your day to do this. Cheers. Take care, Cameron. You too. Bye.